with it. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll send it out as well so you can use that as, uh, in your prayer time. And uh, um, maybe we'll revisit it here in a little bit. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see where the Lord leads us today. So I just want to make sure you all know um, that we are so happy to see you. Um, it's nice to see smiling faces in person. Um, it's also nice when people like us online because, uh, one, it lets us know you were there. Two, it gives us that, uh, what is it called, algorithm, I guess, to, to make sure that we're in your, uh, your high feeds. So there's, there's two parts there. If you happen to be in person, though, and you are visiting us today, hopefully someone handed you a blue card. Um, and we would love for you to fill that blue connect card out with your, your information so that we can get a hold of you and, uh, and just make sure that we give you a proper uh, welcome and, and uh, also so you can have some information about what's happening around here. If you are not a uh, paper and pencil type of person on the back of your seats are QR codes. There's one for the website, there's one for that connect card, and then there's also um, one for our giving, so like quick stop shopping right there, better than Walmart, all right? So um, also if you're visiting us, you'll, you'll notice that there's a part of a typical church service that we, you will not see, and it's the passing of the plates. Um, we sort of uh, did away with that during that pandemic that, uh, you know, that we all uh, don't want to talk about, and uh, we found out that a lot of people would like to do that as an act of worship, that giving portion. And so um, we have blessing boxes in the, in the, located in the back and on your way out. And uh, feel free to, to spend some time there about praying about uh, what you might give or pray now and, and drop it in later. But that is, that is our new offering plates for you uh, that, uh, that might have question. I was just told that many of you did not get to vote yet because we ran out of ballots. So, oh, oh ye of little faith I am, right? So uh, I will print those out. So if you have not yet voted, if you're a church member and haven't voted, there will be more ballots after the service. So, um, so don't, don't give up. Hang in there. Uh, you'll notice in the back our alabaster box got moved and our celebration was uh, very good. I will tell you that. I'm not going to give you the total until next week, though, so you have to come back next week to hear the total. But uh, if you forgot your box last week, if you gave last week, but, you know, like, maybe I, I really believe in that. I believe in the building um, of churches and hospitals and, and parsonage for those pastors and on the mission field. Uh, you can still give today. It's just in the back there on your way out. We have a couple sign-up sheets that weren't there. Um, sort of things have gone like a little haywire here in the last couple weeks. I don't know. End of church year happens every year. You think you'd be more prepared for it. I don't know. So no excuses, but uh, a couple things have gotten missed as sign-ups. One of them is um, the simple cooking for, for healthy meals, and uh, that is actually going to be tomorrow. Dave likes to have a count, so if you haven't signed up, if he doesn't already know you're coming tomorrow from 6 to 8, um, please make sure you sign up there right outside the doors in the back. If you have no clue what, the, what I'm talking about, sign up and come. You'll find out. It'll be fun. So... Uh, March 4th is the other thing. I'm just going to tell you all now, most of you have smartphones or a calendar of the old kind. Go ahead and put the first Saturday of every month on your calendar. Things that you see around the church that need done, um, that is the day that we have designated. So our next one is March 4th. Yes, we know that there's a yard sale. Not everybody comes to the yard sale. We understand. So uh, if you're, you're not a normal help in the yard sale, but you still want to help your church out, a wonderful way to do that would be to come. There's stuff to do inside, outside. We won't be working, obviously, around the front of the building where the yard sale is, but we have a whole back. We have lots. We have lots that you can do, and uh, that's just your opportunity if you see what needs done uh, to just go ahead and do it, and that starts at 9 o'clock. Come as long as you want. As long as the church is open, you're, you're free to, to come and uh, and just help. We would have loved that. And the last thing that there's a sign-up sheet for, um, we weren't sure what we were doing, but uh, at staff meeting a couple weeks ago, uh, we sort of solidified. We decided to sort of do a play on words for the time change thing, right? 
it's a it's a good time to celebrate it took us about a month to figure out if we were really doing time change and and we concluded that we are so if anybody knows that we're not then uh, we're just going to celebrate it anyway but march 12th is when we turn our clocks forward that daylight savings time thing and um, we decided that we are going to celebrate the sun shining extra bright that day how about that yeah. right so we've been talking about christ among us and we thought what what better time and uh and we're going to just celebrate that change lots of changes are happening and i can tell you it is stretching us all that's a good thing keeps us young right so uh, we're going to have a potluck that day. And so there is a sign-up sheet out there. What we would like for you to do is a family name is fine, how, much is, how many people are in your family, and then what dish you're bringing. That way you can sort of get an idea and sort of have an idea so we don't end up with like 50 pots of baked beans during that time. So, uh, but if we do, we'll just thank him and celebrate, right? So anyway, um, at this time, I believe we are going to do a dedication uh, for one of our littlest and newest people in our church. Yes. Nope. The most exciting things we get to do as pastors. You got it there. You got it. You got it. You got it. All right. Good deal. One of the most exciting things we get to do as pastors is dedicate babies. Everybody loves babies, right? Um, I hear politicians do really well with babies. Have you heard about that? <laughs> anyway, so anyway, one of the things that we get to do is celebrate babies, and we get to dedicate them. So that's an exciting thing, and I'm excited today to get to uh, be a part of Adam's great day. Uh, so let me start it this way. Matthew 19, 13, and 14 reads, then little children were brought to Jesus for him to, to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Chad and Elise, in presenting Adam for dedication to our Lord, you are hereby witnessing to your own personal Christian faith and to your purpose to guide him early in life to the knowledge of Christ as Savior. It is your duty to teach him as soon as he is able to learn the nature and end of what this day signifies. To watch over his education that he may not be led astray. I love it when they talk, you know? <laughs> to, direct him, to direct him to the sanctuary that he may participate with others in worship, to restrain him from evil associates and habits as much as possible, and to bring him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Will you do your best to do these things with the help of God? If so, answer, I will. I will. Dedication also signifies the acceptance of this child into the community of Christian faith. And so, I'm asking all of you, our congregation, to be a part of this ritual right now. Will you, congregation, commit yourself to the body as the body of Christ to support and encourage Chad and Elise as they endeavor to fulfill their responsibilities to Adam? And will you assist them by nurturing his growth towards spiritual maturity? If so, answer, I will. Amen. I think you got some support. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> there you go there you go let me pray for him our heavenly father we do here and now dedicate adam pendarvis adam d pendarvis to you watch over him as he grows and draw him into personal relationship with you fill him with your holy spirit and lead him all the days of his life and bless him with your presence as he grows we ask this in the name of the father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So, we like to use carnations, colored carnations, to kind of signify what we're talking about here. And so, the blue carnation represents your life, Chad, as, as the father of Adam. And you are 
meant or called to bring up this child in the way that God is leading him to go. Bringing up a child is done best by two dedicated parents. I'm Barb. Pastor Barb is presenting this blue carnation to you as Adam's father. The blue carnation represents the importance of the family bloodline. In most societies, it is the bloodline of the father that is considered to be continued in the children. You are the keeper of this trust. You are expected to teach Adam what this means. It is your responsibility to, to instruct him in the values of a good name and a good reputation. Likewise, you must conduct your own life as an example of this truth. The Bible puts you in a unique position as the, as the priest and leader of your family. Take this responsibility with great seriousness. No one will do it for you, Chad. Lead your family in prayer and spiritual matters. Be the leader without being the dictator. Be a father that Adam can follow in life and into heaven. This carnation is also meant to remind you of the work of Christ as he gave his all for the salvation of men and women. One day, Adam will see this truth. It is your responsibility to be sure he understands the plan of salvation so a decision can be made by him for Christ. Follow, the, follow that decision by helping Adam to continue to grow as a Christian and servant of God. We're going to present a white carnation to Elise. This white carnation symbolizes your life, Elise. As Adam's mother, it is your responsibility to instruct him in the value of living a pure life before man and God. Your duty is to maintain purity within your life and within your home as an example of the purity of Christ. The Bible challenges us to live a life without sin and above reproach. Adam will follow what you are far more than what you say. Maintain this purity with all of your strength. You are the representative of, to Adam of God's purity and holiness. The white carnation stands for the purity that comes from the righteousness of God. Seek God often for help to maintain this standard and teach it to Adam when he is old enough to understand. It is only by realizing the meaning of purity that Adam will grasp the unholy nature of sin and choose to forsake it. We're also going to present you with a light blue carnation today. This flower symbolizes the combination of lives, of, of your lives together. This flower symbolizes the future of what you are or what you have created in Adam. Adam has a future that directly that is directly influenced by the two of you. And he will be his own and will be revealed as he grows and develops. But you are called to lead him to the cross. The life has this life has been given to you as a sacred trust. Understand that God expects you to enlist his help to help accomplish this joyful task. Day by day, his life will develop before you. Small things will be big things in his young life. Trust and treat Adam as a special gift that he is. Can I hold him? Yeah. <laughs> they cry. Thank you. Oh, babies don't cry, do they? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, he doesn't like that light. light. Let's get rid of that light. Get rid of that light. David just turned on the light. I'm sorry. It's his fault, not mine. I'll step over here. Look at that. All right. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Let me pray for Adam. Lord God, I thank you for Adam. I thank you for this Pendarvis family and their willingness to be a part of us. They're joining us as family and, and enjoying life together, learning more about you, worshiping you more. 
and understanding who you are. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you would bless this young life, that you would come into this family in a way that leads them closer to you, and that Adam would know he has been given over to you as the main one that Chad and Elise together will be leading to you. Lord, bless his life, bless their lives together, and we dedicate him now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Take control, Lord, and fill them with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, he's good as long as there's no light in his eyes. <laughs> he does not like to see I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Congregation, make sure you welcome Chad, Elise, and Adam before you leave today. Thank you all. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that was kind of a good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's wake up. Stand to your feet. Psalm 34 says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak of his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. Let's exalt his name together this morning. Let's worship him. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he's above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. the rising to the setting sun his love endures forever and by the grace of god we will carry on his love endures forever
strong forever God is with us forever your neighbor and say, God is faithful. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you that you love us just the way we are, just as we have come, Father. And we just pray your special anointing on this service. Father, would you settle in upon us this morning? Clear our hearts and our minds so that we can open, be open to what you have. Anoint the pastor Bless the children. Bless all services. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turn. Let the king of my heart 
Be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, you're good, oh. Good, oh, you are good, so good, oh, Lord, you are good, you're good, oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo in my days, oh, he is my song. Let's sing that again. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart You are good, you're good, oh, you are good, so good, oh, Lord, you are good, you're good, so good, you are good, you're good, oh, you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down do you believe that this morning you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me You're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, Lord, you are good, so good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me. you are good you're good oh come on every voice you are good you're good oh sing it to the lord this morning you are good you're good oh lord you are good you're good oh and and have a seat and uh as you're as you're sitting though i want you to prepare your hearts god's working he's moving he's speaking and i think we aren't doing a very good job of listening always and i think it takes all of us listening together not just individually when we're only listening individually we're missing what everybody else is hearing and sharing and so this morning as we come to prayer 
I'm going to pray, but then I, I'm going to ask Amy if she'll repeat that, that welcome prayer. And I want everybody to pray along those words that are up there. If you didn't get a chance to read them, they are powerful. And so I don't want to get in the way of God. And I, when I saw that, I thought, as I was watching it again, I thought, God, that's what we need. That's what we need. So, Lord, we come to you today thanking you for being so faithful. If we're honest, we have to admit that there's times that we fall short in that category. That we want to think what we're hearing, we want to think what we're doing is so important. And, Lord, in the big scheme of things, in your great plan, all you're asking is our faithfulness. You're asking us to compare our faithfulness to your faithfulness. And Lord, we fall short. So we ask that you would forgive us for that. And Lord, we know that there are so many times when you're moving all around us and we're either so busy or preoccupied or focused on something else that we miss you. Lord, we're sorry for that because we know that when we receive your presence as you've freely given, we are renewed in strength and in mind and in spirit. We miss that. So Lord, help us. Help us as you reveal yourself in every circumstance of our life to really see you and to hear you and walk with you in it. Lord, we want you to be our song that we sing. We want to bring you glory. We want to bring you honor. We want to bring you praise. But we can only do that when we put ourselves aside and allow you to occupy the very center of our hearts. So, Lord, we're going to use this video. We're going to lift our voices together in sincere prayer time in sincere pouring ourselves out to you with words that we might not normally construct on our own but we're going to pray in unity for your spirit to inhabit the praise and the prayer of your people right now we thank you
I don't know how you're feeling today, but I feel like we've been in the presence of God. I just feel like there's something happening, and I hope you're not missing it. So I just want to say, I think it's an exciting day to be together, right? Over this last week, my prayer has been that last week's service would challenge all of us to get more serious about what Holy Spirit is leading us to be. He has work for us to do. Do you know that? But he also has blessing that he wants to pour out on each of us. Realize that. It's not all about what we can do for God. He continually does for us. And he has direction for each of us to follow so we can gain a better understanding of his love. So that we can have more excitement about serving him through our lives. I believe that each of us can experience the love, joy, and peace of God if we will just allow Holy Spirit's leading to be our focus each and every day. I live my life as I hear him leading me. I I don't go on my own path. I... I, I try hard to make sure that I'm listening. Remember that word? I've heard it a lot for the last year or so, right? I go where he sends me. I say what he asks me to say. Sometimes I might be a little hesitant about what I'm saying, but he always directs and he always prepares the ears of those who are meant to hear. That's an all-the-time thing. It's not a statement that is made because Pastor Ed said it. It's just the truth. God is listening to you. He's wanting you to hear, but he's opening your ears to the things that you'll receive. So I do all I can to stay open and willing to hear him as I listen. For his voice. That's what I received from last week's service. And as I just said, it inspired me to be praying for each of you to feel. You know, feel. That's 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 not really something that we have to have, but I I pray that you will feel his presence as you seek all of him each day of your life. I believe that's where revival starts. And I believe it's time for us to experience revival. Right? Okay, so I'm excited to see what God has for us today. Aren't you? I want to take a look at this, at an Old Testament book. The Old Testament prophet Daniel. And I want to look at his prayer from chapter 9. Okay? So, self-titled book, Daniel, chapter 9. I've asked Jamie to come and read it. Would you please stand in honor and reverence to the word of the Lord? And the microphone disappeared. Good morning, everyone. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord? Great, I just want to know you all are listening. All right, let me set this up here. Daniel 9. It was the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede and the son of Ahasuerus, who became king of the Babylonians. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from the reading of the word of the Lord, as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet, at Jerusalem, by Thessalon, for 70 years. 
So I turned to the Lord God, and I pleaded with him in prayer and fasting, and I wore burlap and sprinkled myself with ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O Lord, you are great and awesome God. You are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke on your authority to our kings and princes and ancestors and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are in the right, but as you see, our faces are covered with shame. This is true of all of us, including the people of Judah and Jerusalem and all Israel and scattered near and far. Wherever you have driven us because of our disloyalty to you, O oh Lord, we and our kings, princesses, princes, and ancestors are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. But the Lord our God is, a mer is merciful and forgiving, and even though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the Lord our God, for we have not followed the instructions he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has disobeyed your instruction and turned away, refusing to listen to your voice. So now the solemn curses and judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured down on us because of our sin. You have kept your word and done to us and our rulers exactly as you warned. Never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. Every curse written against us in the law of Moses has come true. That we have refused to seek mercy from the Lord our God by turning from our sins and recognizing his truth. Therefore, the Lord has brought upon us the disaster he prepared. The Lord our God was right to do all of these things, for we did not obey him. O oh Lord, our God, you brought lasting honor to your name by recurring I, I'm sorry, by rescuing your people from Egypt in the great display of power. But we have sinned and are full of wickedness. In view of all your faithful mercies, Lord, please turn your furious anger away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, and all the neighbor, neighboring nations mock Jerusalem. All the neighboring nations mock Jerusalem and your people because of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. Oh, our God, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead for your own sake. Lord, smile again on your desolate sanctuary. Oh, my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and hear and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name, lies in ruins. We make this plea, not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay. O oh my God, for your people and your city bear your name. As a reading, you can be seated. Thank you, Jamie. Let me pray again. Lord God, hear our prayer. We pray, asking for your infilling. So now, Lord, as we look at your word, I pray that you would open our ears to hear what you have for us. I pray, Lord, that as I try to bring what you've given me, that you would hide me in the shadow of your cross, that it would only be your words that come out of my mouth. But just in case, Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to guard every ear Open them to the words that they need to hear that they will receive from you and nothing from me. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 So today is the first Sunday of the season of Lent. For some of you, this is the day of celebrating the first break from your annual Lenten fast. 
For others of you, this is a day of focusing on repentance and beginning to look for restoration. And for the rest of you, I suspect, this is all just really confusing. Right? See, this, this prayer of Daniel is an interesting prayer. It follows an account of one of Daniel's visions that took place while a different king was ruling in Babylon. If you read through Daniel, you'll see that it's story after story after story. As, as I understand all of this progression, I, I'd say that it goes, King Nebuchadnezzar, he conquered Israel, and he took Daniel and his people captive to Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar was then followed by King Belshazzar, who was in power when chapter 8's vision happened. I'm setting that up so maybe some of you will read Daniel today, just so you know. And then he was followed by King Darius, who was on the throne when chapter 9's vision and prayer were recorded. <clears throat> now I say all of this so that you will have an understanding of who this man, this prophet Daniel is as he writes of his visions. Daniel was a man of constant integrity. He, he lived his life in a hostile place. Some of you, I'm sure, can relate to that. Not like Daniel did, but you've lived your life in a hostile place, right? See, Daniel believed and worshipped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today, we would say he worshipped God, right? Because we don't really distinguish. I, I don't hear a whole lot of people say, yes, pastor, I'm a follower of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't hear that very often. But Daniel was willing to die rather than deny God's existence and power over everything else. For those of you who have already read or studied or been to Bible school and heard about Daniel, if you think about what happened with him in the lion's den, right? He was put in with a bunch of hungry lions overnight because he would not recant. He would not stop praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He would not turn to what the rest of his hostile community toward his belief was doing. But I, I don't really want to talk about Daniel today. My thoughts are more about this idea of Lent and the, the call to repentance. See, that's what we focus on on the first Sunday of Lent, repentance. Somebody said to me, so should we do a graphic of hell so that everybody can see where they're going if they don't repent? I said no. Right? Repentance. It's a big deal. And if you look at the opening few verses of Daniel, you quickly see that this author was disturbed by what he learned. Let's read that again. Daniel 9, 2 through 6. It says this. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. I also wore rough burlap and sprinkled myself with ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O oh Lord, you are the great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke on your authority to, the, to our kings and princes and ancestors and to all the people of the land. I'd say that's a pretty strong verse, wouldn't you? Pretty strong passage of verses. So, so Daniel, he's crying out to God 
in what we would call today repentance. It's repentance as he, he's agonizing over the position in which God's people have found themselves living. He's asking God to have mercy on them, to set them free from this anguish. He knows it's their sin that has kept them in this place for so long, and he's asking God to help them not sin. This sounds like a familiar message. Living holy as God is holy? Living without sin rather than making excuses for it? Sounds like a familiar message. Last week, we answered the question, why are you standing here looking into the sky? The same Jesus is going to return to you in the way you watched him go. Right? That was the question. Why are you standing here looking into the sky? The point was that God is moving. He has so much for us to accomplish, but it's up to us to get busy doing what he keeps asking us to do. Somebody told me something about um, we we can read about exercise all we want, but until we actually start exercising... It never changes anything. What do you think about that? I think that might be true. I keep on adding weight instead of losing weight. I'm thinking like I'm doing things right, God, but I'm not doing things right. The the evidence is there. Right? Daniel lived his life in a place where very few people, listen, very few people would take a stand against the established ruler of the day. Well, why is that? Because most of the people who stood up to those in charge died. It was that simple. You don't go against the king. You don't go against the establishment. Maybe you've heard some stories of Daniel or from the book of Daniel about him and his friends. See, they found themselves confronted with eating things that they knew were forbidden as God followers to eat. They faced a fiery furnace, a den full of hungry lions, and a mob or two of people who just really didn't like them. You ever had anybody just tell you, I just really just don't like you? I don't know why I don't like you. I just don't like you. People say that stuff. I hope never in this place. But people say that stuff. But see, Daniel and his friends, they never turned their back on their beliefs. They believed their God was real. Anybody here experience a real God? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. And their God would deliver them. Or he would reward them, right? Either way was good for them. They were fine either way. But Daniel, Daniel now is praying for God's understanding and mercy. And he's asking for deliverance as he pleads for forgiveness. The most important point is that he is repenting as he makes his plea. Verse 17 through 19 says, O our God, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead. For your own sake, Lord, smile again on your desolate sanctuary. Oh my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name, lies in ruins. We make this plea not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. Oh Lord, hear O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay. O oh my God, for your people and your city, hear your name. I, I titled this message today, Repentance. What's that? 
Because I believe this is a word that doesn't get used very often these days. The church is still in agreement that repentance is important. But we, like so many others, realize that word can be a little bit offensive. So the the question is, what is repentance? Repentance is turning away from the things that separate us, separate you from God. Simple as that. Turning away from the things that separate you from God. What do we call sin? Sin is the thing that separates you from God. Huh. I could have just said repentance is turning away from sin. Right? See, that's the stuff we know. That's the, that's the way we know to live. That's the stuff that gets in the way turning away from it. So when when we come to God, as Daniel did in his prayer, acknowledging our sin and asking for forgiveness, we also have to decide we won't do those things again. Do you hear that at home when you're watching this on the video? Do you hear that? You will not do those things again. That's repentance. I have always thought it was interesting that people who are living their lives in what we call open sin, you know, that that means that they're living in a way that they know separates them from God's desire for their lives. They know it separates them. They know it's in the way. They know this is the thing that's keeping them from having the power that Pastor Ed and Pastor Barbara are always talking about. And, And they'll respond to a call for salvation, but not change the way they live. This means they refuse to repent. They refuse to allow God to bring completeness into their life. See, God has so much more for all of us. So much more. But we have to be willing to turn away from our sin and receive Holy Spirit, into our lives. That's on us. He's the one. That Spirit, Holy Spirit, He's the one. He cleans us. And He's the one that keeps us clean. That's why I made our next step. You'll find that in your blue Connect card. Remember that? Next step. Our next step is to find true peace in repentance. That's where you find true peace, when you turn away from the things that separate you from the one that brings true peace. Makes sense. The peace of God comes on us when we truly come to the end of ourselves. When we lay down the reins and let him lead us rather than us always trying to be in control. I want you to hear this. Control causes us to lose focus because it keeps us looking inward. I've explained, I'm a control freak. And I know I'm talking to some control freaks. Okay? Control causes us to lose focus because it keeps us looking inward. We find our strength in the things we control and not the God we should be asking to take control from us. Remember a few years ago, open hand, quit holding everything, open your hands. That's giving up control. See, God created all things. Remember the sermon from a couple weeks ago? And he knows the best way for those things to operate. When we get between his will and our own, we stifle the joy he wants us to experience. He wants to fill us. He wants to fill in all the gaps that constantly rob us of his desire for our life. I just saw a movie. Some of you probably saw it. 
It's called Jesus Revolution. Now, I went and saw it on the early release, and I liked it so much, I took my wife on a date and saw it twice. <laughs> right? It's, it's all about the Jesus movement of the late 60s and early 70s. And first, I want you to hear me say this. I loved the movie. I thought it was great. It resonated with me in so many ways, I can't even begin to explain them to you. If you want to talk about it, come and talk to me. I'll be at my house tonight at 6 o'clock. We have a lift group. It's a really great thing. Come and talk to me. My address, all you have to do is ask me. I'll get you there. Okay? I want you there. But this movie, it also challenged me. See, I've been challenging you to grow the church and support the church and be involved with the church. But what if that's the wrong challenge? The line from the movie that has stuck with me, it came at the very, not very beginning, but at the very early in the story. It was said, while the discussion was happening between the pastor and the hippie evangelist. Can you imagine? What would you do if a hippie evangelist walked in here today? Right? When, when explaining why the hippies didn't attend the church, the evangelist said these words, and it bugs me. We wouldn't be welcome in your church. I, I, I mean, that's been going over and over and over in my head. It made me stop and consider who is welcome in our churches. It challenged me to think about people we exclude from spending time with God's people. That's what we like to be called, you know, God's people, right? There was this other group. You could read about them at the beginning of this book. They're called the Israelites. They were God's people, right? And they were shut off to anything that wasn't what they believed what they thought was right, what they had chosen. This made me open my eyes to all the people who might, might feel like they could never come into a church. C.C. Naz or any other and be welcome. Now, I know we've opened our doors to the lost and, and, and we... Um, we, have, we have really connected with people who are not like us many times, but I can't think about that statement. We wouldn't be welcome in your church, Pastor. All I can think of is, ouch. I can't even say amen or ouch. All I can think of is, ouch. This is the first Sunday of the season of Lent. Lent is a time for us to focus on repentance and restitution. I've already explained repentance, so let me just talk a little bit about restitution. Restitution is a complete forgiveness and reinstitution of relationship. You got that? A complete forgiveness, not oh, I forgive you, but I will remember. Right? A complete forgiveness and reinstitution of relationship. Do you have anybody that you're just not really ready to bring back into the fold? Have anybody that you're just not really ready to let come to your next event? Anybody that's just kind of, I've already dealt with them too many times. I'm done. Right? Some, some chuckles, you know what I'm talking about. See, restitution is opening oneself to a new start and allowing all involved to join in. This is how the preacher responded to the hippie in the movie I just referenced. He didn't really like how the hippies were living, and he didn't really agree with much of their stance on life, but he was willing to allow God's use of his church building to reach them. 
And when he did, you're going to be surprised, some of his congregation, they didn't like it. Can you believe that? I mean, who would ever think that a congregation would try to offend somebody out of their church? That never happens. By the way, you're sitting in my seat over there. <laughs> who would think that someone in the church would act better than others? You know, I'm, I'm just a little bit above where you are. You're okay, but just stay where you are, right? Or maybe you've heard of the time when so-and-so began to do that annoying thing and that other person called them out so that they would be hurt and leave. Maybe you've heard about that. See, these are the, the reasons the hippies wouldn't go to church. Are they the reasons our neighbors won't come here? That should bring the amen or the ouch, right? I don't know about you, but I never want to be found counted among those who wouldn't let someone come into the presence of Jesus. I left the church for that. Don't ever let anything stop you from bringing people to Jesus. We just don't have anything that's so sacred that those people shouldn't be around it. We don't. God created all people, and he wants a renewed relationship with all of us. Yes. Yes. I hope you agree. I'm going I'm to invite the worship team back to the front. And I've already given Summer a heads up that um, I, I've added a lot to the sermon after I called them up. But... I just need them to come before I say something that I might regret, you know? The truth is, I make sure that I'm prayed up when I step into this sacred spot. And I, I come here to bring you the Word of God. So I don't really worry about saying wrong things. Maybe you've heard me pray that God would keep you from hearing anything that escapes my mouth coming from my thoughts, right? But I know God wants to break open revival in Spring Hill. Yes. I yes. know he does. Yes. I know yes. he wants to build his church here as well, here at CC Naz. I know he wants to build his church in, in amongst us. And I know he wants all of his children to come home to him as they build relationships with him and those whom he gives them. So I say to you today, will you allow him the opportunity to speak into your soul and bring revival? Will, will you open your mind to what he's got for you? You are the only thing holding back revival. He wants to send you. He wants you to be revived. He wants to fill you with His Spirit. He wants you to be alive. He never wants you to sit as a dead log in a chair. Now, I know that's hard preaching, but Acts, Acts 2, 14 through 21, if I can find it again, says this. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all my people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. 
and I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, God wants to pour out Holy Spirit on you and me. That means the only reason we don't experience constant Holy Spirit living is because we don't receive Him. It's our fault. It's our fault. Revival isn't taking place right now. Will you stand with me? These altars are here for you. They're not meant to be anything spectacular. They're here for you when you want to come seeking God's calling or His infilling or revival. It all starts with our coming to repent and call for restoration to God. He's our Father, right? As the worship team sings or plays, or if they all end up here at the altar asking God for more, I ask, will you honestly answer whatever he's asking of you today? Will you come to him allowing him freedom to change you. That's the tough part. Will you give him control of your life and let him lead in all the places that you try to control? Will you come and pray? Promise. 
My experience says that he'll never fail us. Not has he, he not, hasn't yet, but he never will. He has something great for each of us. He blesses us as we turn to him. He fills us with his spirit as we turn to him and open our hearts. He gives us direction when we ask. So hold out your hands and let me give you a blessing. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. May the Lord enlarge your territory. May the Lord fill your life with every good thing from above. Now, go and serve the Lord and those he puts in your path with the gifts that he has given you. Go in peace. Promise still stands.